TV3 Studios. This is Acadiana's News Channel at 5. Good evening, everyone. I'm Marcel Fontenot. And I'm Jim Hummel. We start tonight in St. Landry Parish, where a Confederate monument outside the courthouse will be coming down. But the big question, when and where is it headed? Our Dre Carr Francois joins us live from Opelousas with what we know so far about the process. Dre Carr. Well, guys, after a unanimous parish council uh, vote last night, uh, this monument that's just behind me will be donated to the sons and the daughters of the Confederacy. Last night, the council voted to have the statue removed and donated to the, either the sons or the daughters of the Confederacy. The St. Landry Parish President Jesse Bellard says he's waiting to see where will the monument that honors Confederate veterans be located. The sons of the, of the Confederacy were there last night, so they wish to have it. So it was where the council voted to, uh, to donate it to them. So now I'm going to contact them and say, okay, where you want it so we can get it moved now. It's, it's, it's done. Now it needs to just be moved off the property and placed where it needs to be uh, placed. When it comes to getting it off the courthouse premises, Bellard says it will be moved as soon as possible. As soon as they tell me where they want to move it and uh, we get the, the uh, movers to move it. Our problem right now is getting somebody to move it. And after speaking with a spokesperson for the sons and daughters of the Confederacy, he says the location is unclear, but they will find a place for this monument. Live in Opelousas, Dre Carr Francois, KTC TV3. Here's Rob's 24 hour forecast. A nice one out there today. Temperatures starting out in the mid to upper 60s to right at 70 degrees at 7 a.m. Got into the mid 80s this afternoon and boy, you can feel that sun kind of working this time of year. Low to mid 80s, 84 top of the hour laugh yet. Lower 80s down toward the coast. It's always a little bit cooler. You get a little bit of a sea breeze here. Notice over toward Calcasieu Pash mid, mid 70s and that's also a reflection of uh, that surf water temperature. So water starting to warm up in the Gulf of Mexico. They were just in the lower 70s. A couple of weeks back. Fair to partly cloudy skies, but most su mostly sunny skies this afternoon, and we expect more of the same overnight tonight. Fair skies, temperatures holding in the mid to upper 60s, and then tomorrow a sun and cloud mix. Generally a nice day. Temperatures back into the middle 80s. So your hour by hour forecast into this evening. If you're heading on out, you probably won't need a jacket or sweater, but if you're going to a restaurant, you know it's always chilly there. Temperatures eventually get down into the mid to upper 60s. And then for tomorrow, again, Another nice day. If you like today, carbon copy or copy and paste, you got it. 85, the projected high for tomorrow. Coming up more at mid 80s this weekend, but we're introducing slight rain chances by Sunday. Better rain chances Monday, Tuesday. Full details and the forecast for Festival International coming up in just a bit. Paris by Paris headlines. We started in Lafayette where a man is in custody after a deputy involved shooting this morning. Deputies with the Lafayette Paris Sheriff's Office got a call about a suspicious person in the 600 block of Fox run near Pinhook Road at about 6.15 this morning. The sheriff's office says during an altercation, the suspect gained control of the deputy's taser and the deputy fired his weapon. The suspect, Draper Harrison, was treated for minor injuries and is facing a number of charges, including aggravated assault of a peace officer. Staying in Lafayette, the suspect in a February shooting will not go to trial. The grand jury chose not to indict Cody Pearson on an attempted second degree murder charge. Investigators said two men were arguing before the victim was shot. An Arneville man will stand trial in Lafayette on a second degree murder charge in connection to an overdose death. Prosecutors say Damien Bernard sold a woman fentanyl laced drugs. That person later died of an apparent overdose. Police, police say she was unaware the drugs contained fentanyl. The African American Heritage Foundation displaying its peace quilt today. A ceremony was held over at LCG where people had a chance to learn more about the history of the quilt. Stories were also shared every hour with visitors who were able to engage with the speakers. Local talents, local heroes uh, on that quilt by way of quilt uh, that worked in the community, that took what they had and used it for the betterment of the community. In Scott, preparations are now underway for the Boudin Festival, which starts tomorrow. Trey Francis joins us live with how the Boudin capital of the world is getting ready for the crowds. Trey. Yes, it is certainly looking really good out here in Scott. I'm actually where some of the food vendors are. And uh, 
it is actually looking really, really good. They are very excited about tomorrow's festivities. Admissions is five bucks. Kids six and under can get in free. Twelve bands are expected to hit the stage, including Blaine Roy, Lil Nate, Dustin Sonye, Chris Ardouin, and Gino Delafosse, to name a few, along with 10 food vendors, carnival rides, and a boudin eating contest, or you could actually get win $500. Free festival shutter parking is also available. No outside beverages, ice chests, or pets are allowed. Best stop is out here. We have New News. We have Menards uh, Cajun Grocery. Uh, we have Billy's. We have Don Specialty Meats. And we have New News. And we have Cautioners also. The impact, we, we really can't put a dollar amount on it, but it is huge because all of our hotels are booked. Uh, the KOA campground is booked. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of traffic throughout our community. So that always means uh, an increase in sales tax revenue. Yes, now, as said before, admissions is $5. The festival will begin Friday uh, evening at 5 until Sunday evening at 6.30. Live in Scott, Trey Francis, KTC TV3. In Vermilion Parish, there's a new resource in ERATH to help people with health care decisions, and it's all thanks to UL nursing students. They set up a free library in ERATH City Park. The library has books and resources that promote physical and mental well-being, better hygiene, diet and exercise, as well as preventative strategies for better health. The FBI is warning farmers to be on the lookout for potential hackers. Officials say cyber criminals might go after agriculture cooperatives during the planting and harvesting seasons, believing they could be more vulnerable and willing to pay off the ex for extortion. The FBI says six grain companies were targeted last fall. Two others have already been attacked this year. They're calling on farmers to take defensive measures against any potential threats. GE is recalling some of its refrigerators because of a fall risk. The company says it's received about 71 reports of the freezer drawer handle detaching, causing 37 people to be hurt. The recall includes six models sold between February of 2020 and January of this year. As you see there, the models have French doors with a bottom freezer drawer. Those with impacted appliances should contact GE for repair. Now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic. The showdown over masks continues. The Department of Justice planning to appeal a federal uh, judge in Florida's decision that overturned the travel mask mandate earlier this week. Here's ABC's Rena Roy with the latest developments. The battle over masks being taken to court once again with the Justice Department fighting back at the request of the CDC. The DOJ vowing to appeal after a Florida federal judge overturned the travel mask mandate earlier this week. Millions of travelers are going maskless after the judge's decision, but many health experts are backing the CDC, which says an order requiring masking in the indoor transportation corridor remains necessary for the public's health. This change in policy sets a really challenging precedent. A single judge overturning a mandate driven by public health professional means that we're unnecessarily putting many people at risk. The country seeing a rise in new daily cases, subvariants of BA2 likely to blame. The COVID cases to me are rising. I gave immunizations in the pharmacy, so I do know how important it is to wear the mask. This school in Los Angeles reinstating its face covering requirement after dozens contracted the virus. Honestly, I wasn't that surprised. Because, you know, spring break was Coachella, everyone's going on vacation. Nearly 100 students at San Mateo High School in California's Bay Area also testing positive after prom. You have to just weigh, are you willing to sacrifice what will happen if you do get COVID and you have to quarantine? versus is it worth it to just go out and have a good time. New York City on the cusp of raising its COVID risk level to yellow or medium with new cases going up. The governor keeping the state's indoor mask mandate in place. As we see this uptick in new cases, the Department of Homeland Security is extending vaccination requirements for non-citizens traveling into the U.S. after consulting with the CDC to help stop the spread. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. COVID cases around the world are still ticking down. According to the World Health Organization, the number of new COVID cases is down 24% globally. COVID deaths also dropped 12%, but the agency points out the declining numbers should be taken with caution because several countries have scaled back on testing, leading to lower numbers detected. And an update on the investigation into whether Lucky Charms is making people sick. The Food and Drug Administration launched an investigation after a website, a poison website, reported more than 1,300 people said they had gastrointestinal issues after eating the cereal. 
However, General, General Mills says it's found no evidence of people getting sick, and the FDA says it's only received a few complaints about people getting sick after eating the cereal. So far, no recalls have been announced. Still ahead right here on Acadiana's News Channel at 5, more aid is headed to Ukraine and a conflicting message from Russian President Vladimir Putin. We'll recap today's developments a bit later on at 519. And a good looking forecast for our Friday, but weekend we might see a shower by Sunday. We'll talk more about that and next week's weather as well, coming up right after the break. The Abbeville Police Department and Crime Stoppers of Vermillion is asking for your assistance in solving this segment's Crime of the Week. The Abbeville Police Department has secured felony warrants against Jalen Vini of Abbeville. Vini is wanted for attempted second degree murder and illegal possession of a firearm by a convicted felon after a shooting which occurred on April 9th, 2022. Vini's last known address is on Oliver Street in Abbeville. Vini is described as a black male, 27 years old, brown eyes, black hair, 5 foot 9 inches tall, and weighs approximately 130 pounds. If you or your family member was the victim of a crime, you'd want someone to come forward. So help us keep Vermillion Parish safe. If you have information on this or any other crime, I encourage you to call the tips line at 740-TIPS or download and log on to the P3 app to report your tips anonymously where you can earn a cash reward. On behalf of the Abbeville Police Department, I'm Lieutenant Jonathan Tuchet. And I'm the Director of the Violent Crimes Task Force and Crime Stoppers Coordinator, Eddie Longlinay. ATC Weatherland. Here's Rob's forecast. Welcome back. Well, a beauty out there today. Sun shining, a sun and cloud mix as we take a look at our drone cam. Again, mostly a fair weather cumulus clouds. Some of the bases darker here and there as there was a little vertical growth on the clouds, but there's a cap on the atmosphere. We have a ridge of high pressure sitting on us, so a beautiful day across the area today. Everything greening up, and at least the green is getting darker. That means the pollen count beginning to ease, but we have a few more weeks to deal with that. So let's take a look at the big picture across the region and across the lower 48 as we have high pressure large and in charge over us. So rain chances near zero again for tomorrow and no better than 10% Saturday, maybe 20% on Sunday. Upper level lows way up here in Hudson Bay. So that's keeping it cool in the northeast. And here comes another weather system in the west impacting uh, the Pacific Northwest and up through uh, the great uh, big sky country of Montana into the western Dakotas. Blizzard warnings. Here we are late April blizzard warnings for portions of the Dakotas. They're expecting a foot of snow and winds gusting in the 50 55 mile per hour range. So near zero visibility. So uh, for some it is still winter. Meanwhile, we do have a little thunderstorm here producing a tornado warning across portions of uh, Missouri and close to home here. It is awfully quiet across the area. We're generally seeing fair to partly cloudy skies across the region. So as we put things in motion going into tonight through tomorrow, it's going to be relatively quiet. Some clouds coming in for tomorrow morning. We'll see mid 60s for your overnight early early morning low or closer to 70 degrees for some, but less cloud cover tonight. So it should cool off a little bit more so through daybreak tomorrow and then tomorrow afternoon. A sun and cloud mix should be a beauty of a day. We'll get up to about 84, 85 degrees once again with breezy south winds more than likely in the mix once again. Going into tomorrow night, we'll see temperatures once again in the mid 60s through Saturday morning and Saturday afternoon uh, back into the middle 80s uh, with a nice breeze out of the south. Maybe Maybe a little bit gustier Saturday versus our, uh, say, Friday. Mid 60s overnight tonight, then tomorrow we'll get into the mid 80s. Tomorrow night, once again, mid to upper 60s. And then as we get into your Saturday, we're looking at temperatures well into the mid 80s once again. So your true view forecast indicating fair skies overnight tonight. Temperatures holding in the mid to upper 60s. We're going to have lighter winds. This is a computer forecast, so the winds are going to be less than 11, uh, probably in the 3 to 4 mile per hour range overnight tonight. They'll get gusty again tomorrow afternoon, but a fine finish to the week with that sun and cloud mix as indicated. 85, the projection. High. A few more clouds later in the afternoon, which is a little bit of a flip of what we've seen over the last couple of days, but generally mostly sunny skies. Much the same for Saturday, staying breezy and warm. A uh, slight chance of an isolated shower Sunday. As we head into Monday, Tuesday, we could see a better chance of scattered showers and some.